Chapter 20 of Your Psychic Powers and How to Develop Them. Your Psychic Powers and How to Develop Them by Harroward Carrington. Chapter 20 Trance. Trance is a condition into which certain mediums enter in order to receive messages and give them in the form of speaking or writing. No one knows at the present time what the medium trance is, or, for that matter, any other kind of trance. Dr. George Moore, in his Use of the Body in Relation to the Mind, says, Trance is a state of body sometimes produced in man, a condition utterly inexplicable by any principle taught in the schools. Professor William James stated his belief that the medium trance was different from any other trance of which we have any knowledge, and this seems to be borne out by the fact that spirit messages are given in this condition, as well as telepathic, clairvoyant, and premonitory messages of all kinds. What is trance? Both trance and catalepsy occur spontaneously. Both may also be induced artificially by hypnotism. Both are mistaken for death, and in many respects they are very similar. In catalepsy the body is rigid, whereas in trance this is very rarely the case this forming the chief mark of distinction, external indication, between the two states. What the internal differences are, we do not know. Various attempts, however, have been made to define them. Dr. Franz Hartmann, e.g., thus distinguishes them. Quote, there seems hardly any limit to the time during which a person may remain in a trance, but catalepsy is due to some obstruction in the organic mechanism of the body on account of its exhausted nervous power. In the last case, the activity of life begins again as soon as the impediment is removed, or the nervous energy has recuperated its strength. End quote. Death, Its Causes and Phenomena by Harroward Carrington and John R. Meter When a hypnotist places his subject under hypnotic control, the subject remains en rapport with the operator. The influence comes from a living person. In the medium trance, it seems possible that the operator is not a living, but a deceased person, and that it is a kind of telepathic influence from spirits which induces this state. In fact, it is brought about by influence from the other side. Light and Deep Trance There are all grades and degrees of trance, from the very light stage, in which there is but little difference from the ordinary waking consciousness, to that degree of deep trance, where the medium is totally unconscious of everything that passes around him. Very deep trance of this character is rare, but many of the most famous mediums have got their best messages while in that condition. The famous Mrs. Piper of Boston had almost to die, to all outward appearances, before she could enter this deep trance, and at the end of two hours or so, during which the trance lasted, the only signs of life were slow respiration and heartbeat. The only signs of consciousness were manifest in the right hand and arm, which did the automatic writing. Many test mediums and sensitives, on the other hand, pass into a stage of trance so light that no one but an expert could detect any trance at all. Yet in many such cases, no memory of the condition remains after the trance is finished. These light trances differ but slightly from cases of daydreams, absent-mindedness, etc., when we say to a person half in joke, you are in a trance. By shades and degrees this becomes deeper, as the state becomes more profound and lower and lower layers or strata of the subconscious mind are reached. Mrs. Piper had three distinct layers of this character. The first differed slightly from the waking state. In this condition she talked. The second condition was far deeper trance, and in this stage spirits were seen instead of human beings. In the third or deepest stage speech was usually absent and automatic writing occurred. Spirit Control During Trance In trance, we may assume that there is a gradual and fluctuating control of the medium's mind and body by the communicating spirit, and that, as one vacates or is driven out by the invading intelligence, the latter is able to control, more and more effectually, the medium. Just as two solid bodies cannot be in the same place at the same time, so two spirit intelligences cannot occupy and control the same body at the same moment. When once the fact of spirit control is granted, the nature and character of this control remains to be solved. How does the spirit manipulate the brain and nervous mechanism of the medium to bring about the desired results? 
what parts of the brain are used and how these and many similar questions remain to be answered and it may take many years of scientific research before we are enabled to answer queries such as these with any degree of confidence the difference between somnambulism and trance the difference between somnambulism and the medium trance seems to be that in the former we remain en rapport with ourselves and in the latter we are in touch with the spirit world many mediums who give inspirational messages or lectures from the platform are in a condition of light trance and children have been known to pass into this condition and give a large amount of valuable information unknown to their seniors and which certainly could not have been known to themselves properly managed the trance condition is not harmful though it may become so in the hands of blundering persons the spiritualist's manual gives four chief reasons why the trance state should not be harmful to those who enter it these are various methods of conveying information during trance one the intelligences acting upon them the mediums are almost invariably of a superior character and therefore must mold the organism by constant use for the expression of higher forms of thought two the relation of the medium to the manifesting intelligence is that of pupil to teacher sometimes that of a child to a wise and loving parent and sometimes both these relations combined with a subtle and ennobling spirituality three there is always a mutual spiritual relation even though the medium is not humanly conscious of it and no one can be a medium for the perfect expression of spiritual messages or discourses who does not consent to the procedure and cooperate with the manifesting spirit four as the master musician improves the instrument he plays upon so also a spirit controlling a human organism for the purpose of expressing wholesome thought imparts a greater power both to the brain and spirit of the medium it is often difficult for spirits to control a medium sufficiently to manifest in any way through him different types of control there are various types of control which are used by spirits in trance mediumship a there is the telepathic method in which the thought is conveyed direct to the mind of the medium who is sufficiently awake in light trance to receive this thought and give it out to the sitter in speech or writing b there is the picture or pictographic method in which the spirits present certain images or pictures to the clairvoyant eye of the medium and these pictures are seen and interpreted either directly or symbolically c there is the sense impression method in which general sensations or impressions are conveyed to the medium who takes on the condition of the communicating spirit describes pains felt in various parts of the body etc as the case may be d there is the direct control method in which the spirit apparently removes the medium's own spirit more or less from the body in deep trance and manipulates it as he would an instrument by acting upon the nervous system direct in much the same way that we act upon our own nervous systems throughout life this latter method is very rare and is only found in cases of very deep trance Doubtless, there are other methods which spirits employ at times, and probably combine all the above on occasion. But these are the most distinctive methods, and they are the ones which may be seen more readily than any others in cases of trance mediumship. In cases of so-called ecstasy, the spirit of the medium obtains the information himself, either by clairvoyant vision, or by partially separating itself from the body and visiting the spiritual world direct the visions which are obtained in ecstasy are thus descriptive of the spiritual world and what is happening there and for this reason most of the revelations so called are ecstatic visions more or less symbolic the best way to enter trance many persons cannot enter trance spontaneously but have to be mesmerized by another person before this condition is brought about even Andrew Jackson Davis was mesmerized for years before he could develop spontaneous trance, so that he could enter it at will. This may be one of the best ways for the beginner to begin his trance mediumship, but you should take care that the person who mesmerizes you is of a suitable temperament and in every way fitted and qualified to do so. If he is not, you are liable to attract to yourself spirits of a lower order and then you will bring to yourself lying and malevolent spirits, and you may induce a case of so-called obsession. However, if the operator is harmonious and qualified for his task, he will not only prevent this, 
but would see you through more safely than if you enter this condition spontaneously and by yourself. Trance is very closely akin to some cases of suspended animation, to certain yoga trance conditions, and even death itself, which has been called its twin brother. As we have seen, however, it differs from all these very widely. Spontaneous trance is doubtless the most commonly experienced, and is the one which you should endeavor to cultivate in yourself, other things being equal. During these conditions, as you develop, many odd and striking phenomena will doubtless become manifest to you. If your hand writes automatically, you will probably note that it becomes more or less sensitive or anesthetic, as explained in the chapter on automatic writing. If speech is induced as the result of trance, this may be striking and coherent, or quite possibly mere nonsense and gibberish. If the latter develops, you may be sure that something is wrong, and you should strive to ascertain what this condition is and correct it if possible. Here, as elsewhere, you must be careful and exercise your own judgment and discretion on the messages received, and not to accept all these as absolute truth, for if you do, you are likely to be greatly deceived, especially at the beginning of your mediumship, where everything is faulty and difficult. The clearer the communications, generally speaking, the surer the messages. But those coming through what might be called amateur mediums are to be trusted only when they have been verified. How to Experiment with the Trance You may experiment with your own trance condition profitably in the following manner. Sit with pencil in hand for automatic writing, and induce one or more friends of yours to do the same thing at the same time. See whether there is any connection between your writings when they are compared the next day. In many instances where this has been tried, striking coincidental messages have been received, partly through one medium and partly through another. They thus tend to confirm each other and show that the same spirit intelligence is active and manifesting through both mediums at the same time almost, or one directly after the other. How to Enter Trance by Yourself in order to induce trance spontaneously in yourself, you should proceed more or less as follows. Begin by gazing for some time at a bright object, such as a reflected light, coming from a mirror, crystal ball, etc. This will tend to tire the eyes and nerves slightly, and bring about a dazed condition, which is usually the beginning of trance. While looking at the bright object, breathe deeply and regularly through the nose and from the diaphragm, as explained before in Chapter 6. You must not let this distract your attention, however, as all the bodily processes should be unconscious. If you have already practiced deep breathing, as before explained, you should by this time be so far advanced that you can do so at will without consciously thinking of it. While looking at the bright object, do not concentrate or think of anything in particular, beyond keeping yourself conscious and remembering all the time that you are yourself that you are not leaving your body, and that you are not going to become totally unconscious. During this process, the room should be as quiet as possible, though some monotonous sound, such as the ticking of a large clock, might assist matters. Do not listen to this consciously, however. Abolish all feelings of fear and all anxiety, as such mental states will effectually prevent you from entering the trance condition. Let yourself go, and develop as far as possible. Symptoms of Early Trance Mediumship You must not imagine that the beginnings of your mediumship will be either profitable or pleasant, because they probably will not be. Nearly all successful mediums will tell you that they have passed through a period, at the beginning of their mediumship, when they thought themselves in danger, and believed that their minds were being impaired for the time being. This, however, passes off as you progress, provided that you progress along the right road at the beginning of your mediumship and this you should endeavor in every way to do. If you can consult an experienced medium, or, still better, if you can sit with him during your development, or induce him to be present during your psychic unfoldment, things will be far easier for you, and far safer than they would be otherwise. The oncoming of trance is often signified by certain physical and psychical manifestations, which must not alarm you when they appear, as they sometimes but not always do. Hiccoughs, sudden and spasmodic pains and cramps, a feeling of all-goneness, nausea, flashes of light, or the sensation of faintness and that everything is turning black before you. These are a few of the symptoms which you are liable to experience during your early development. 
and, though they may not be pleasant, you had better be warned of them in advance, and not be alarmed when they appear. Sometimes, however, none of these signs are manifest, only a delightful sensation of falling asleep upon a bed of roses. In these cases, the psychic has developed himself properly and systematically, and his guides or controls are also wise and helpful. These are the fortunate but unhappily rare cases, but it is hoped that, by following the advice given in this book, many more will be enabled to develop in this wholesome manner. THE THREE RULES TO FOLLOW There are three chief and most essential factors to be considered. 1. Your mental and physical health must be quite up to the standard. If you are depleted, exhausted, or run down physically, if you are suffering from any disease, or if, on the other hand, you are full of fear, apprehension, and doubts, or if anger and similar thoughts rage in your soul, you may anticipate a difficult time in your development and unpleasant experiences throughout that slow process. 2. You should be careful to keep your self-consciousness active and alert when entering trance. Do not give yourself up completely, or allow the mind to become a blank at first. Give yourself up in every other way but this. You must always keep in the background of your mind the thought, I am I. I am so-and-so, your name. I will remain in my body. I am strength and power. I will not be influenced against my will by forces other than good. I can always return to myself when I want to. These and similar suggestions you must give to yourself, and hold them in your mind as a central point of force while entering trance, even while allowing yourself to become passive in every other way. If you do this, you will avoid a great deal of difficulty and danger. 3. If you can in any way assure yourself that you have a band of spirits or controls on the other side who are ready and willing to help you, this would mean much. A good medium or clairvoyant could probably tell you whether this is the case, and the nature of the intelligences who are trying to influence and act upon you. If these are described as evil, you had best postpone your development until this condition changes. If, on the contrary, they are described as good and helpful, you may proceed, subject to the above precautions and advice. Important Conditions to be Fulfilled It is important to have a plentiful supply of fresh air in the room when entering trance, and after you are in that condition. Also, the light should be so regulated as to affect you most agreeably. This may be semi-darkness, though many trance mediums develop in full light. Soft music may be found beneficial in some cases, though not in all. You should have everything ready to hand, such as pencils, paper, etc., before you enter the trance condition. During the trance state, you will probably be more or less sensitive to objects placed in your hands. That is, you will be enabled not only to psychometrize them, but in connection with the objects given you, you will get spirit messages and information concerning the individuals to whom they formerly belonged. All objects of this character carry the aura or influence of the person with whom they have come into contact, and for this reason, those objects which have been next the skin are the best for this purpose. Gloves, headbands, etc. are especially valuable. These should be wrapped, as before explained, in oil silk, and they should be handled as little as possible after the death of the person to whom they belonged. Developing Exercises a very good practice in developing trance mediumship in yourself is to cultivate the habit of analyzing your own falling asleep process. Try to catch yourself as you fall asleep and hold on to yourself when in this semi-sleeping condition as long as you can before finally dropping off to slumber. This you will find very difficult at first, but it can be mastered more or less in time. If you can succeed in catching yourself in this manner when nearly asleep, and retaining a certain degree of conscious control, you may rest assured that you will not only be a good trance medium, but that you will be able to protect yourself while in the trance state, and that harm can hardly come to you when in this condition. This is a very excellent practice, and has given many psychics that power over themselves which they formerly lacked. Spiritual repose is essential for the trance medium who would develop simply, harmoniously, into practical and wise mediumship. In this manner, you are said to come in tune or harmony with the great cosmic currents of truth and wisdom which flow hither and thither in our world, and to and fro from the spiritual source of love, wisdom, and intelligence. Once get into harmony with this stream, 
and your progress not only as a medium but as a supreme psychic is assured end of chapter twenty